This is part 8 of Gone to See the River Man. I will spare you the horrific details of the next part coming. Just passing through Multnomah Falls. Back to Spocompton. So as I mentioned in the last part, Edmund's cousin had returned from the Vietnam War with Polaroid pictures of deceased Asian women that he had destroyed. And when I mean destroyed, I mean disemboweled, decapitated, ripped apart. And each of these pictures depicted him and his soldier buddies um, putting body parts where they shouldn't be inside these deceased women. Very graphic depictions of abuse to a corpse. And Edmund saw these and he's like, wow, I like that. And of course, Edmund was young. He didn't know a whole lot about sexual things. But this was his first exposure to something like this. Because they lived off the grid and uh, um, pornography is not really accessible in the middle of the woods, so they have to make do. So these Polaroid pictures was his new thing. And to quote his cousin, he's like, nothing feels better than do diddling uh, a decapitated head. Yeah. So when I heard that part of the book, my actual face was... So Buzz is now dead. They dumped his body in the water to float in the river of blood. What a sentence. So now Lori and Abby are walking on the bank of the river together, and Lori's mindset about her sister has changed after Abby's strange behavior thought to herself, well, I'm still better at Abby. I'm better than Abby at everything. Ooh, secret tunnel, secret tunnel. Anytime Abby slipped on rocks, Lori laughed at her. And keep in mind, these sisters are in their early 40s. Lori is acting super childish and mean to her sister. And there was a point where Abby started sprinting into the woods after hearing the little boy's laughter again. She saw what looked like their dead brother, Petey, who was still 10 years old, sprinting in the woods, running away from them, giggling, and Abby chased after him. And Lori is like, no, what are you doing? Get back here. And Abby's like, no, it's Petey. It's Petey. And Lori's like, no. Petey is dead. He's gone. He's been gone for about 30, 30 years. Um, no, Lori. You see, the river man granted my wish. I wanted my brother back. And Lori looked at Abby like she's crazy. Like, no, um, the river man isn't a genie in a bottle, you dork. He's probably just a guy. I don't know. Well, he's here, Lori. He's right here. And out from behind a tree peeked this pale, gaunt figure that was Pete. It looked like Pete, who was sickly, and he looked angry. He looked right at Lori. It's your turn to get hurt, Lori. It's your turn. I'm tired. Lori was horrified at seeing her brother, who she hadn't seen in 30 years, who she was responsible for his death to begin with. You're not real, Pete. You're not, you're not Pete. You're, you're not real. And the figure of Pete started laughing at her and chanting, it's your turn to get hurt. It's your turn to get hurt. I'm tired. I don't want to do it anymore. Lori began to cry as her brother began to sob and scream at her. I don't want to do it anymore, Lori. It's wrong. We have to stop. I don't want to do it anymore. It's wrong. What if our mo mom and dad find out? Lori cried and screamed at him to stop. You're not Pete. Stop it. Lori began to chase her brother and she screamed after him. It's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. And now we go into a flashback when young Pete was in the hospital. He was put on feeding tubes since he refused to eat anything. Lori's parents were absolutely wrecked that they were losing their son 
and Abby was severely injured. A lot of the blame was put on themselves. They blamed themselves for being bad parents. Like, what did we do wrong? What, what did we do? What could, what could we do to make this better? Pete was on a 24-hour watch in an eating disorder unit, but any time the doctors left the room, he would rip out his feeding tube. The few times Lori came in to visit her brother, she just looked at him in disgust. She thought to herself that he was so selfish for succumbing to his eating disorder that all of the attention was taken away from her, from mom and dad, and placed on Pete and Abby like her parents never paid her any attention now since both of them were ill. She was mad at her brother for being sick because of what she did, but she didn't think she did anything wrong, which is absolutely abhorrent. Pete passed away later that week.